Okay, so I'm gonna make a quick little tutorial about how to groom your golden retriever at home. Um, I am not a professional by any means, but these are just some tips that I have picked up on or learned from Roxanne's breeder or learned about on the internet and I figured I would just put them into a quick little video right here. So the first thing is you want to get your dog comfortable with your table. Um, I have a grooming table as you can see, but you don't have to have a grooming table. Any table um, that's at a pretty good height for you to reach will do. So what you want to do is have some treats for your dog. And I now have the treat bag in my hand, so <laughs> Roxanne's very interested. Um, and that's what you hear crinkling right now. But what you want to do is start to sort of introduce your dog to the table while your dog is on the ground. Give them treats for sniffing the table, showing any kind of interest, anything like that. And then what I like to do is kind of, while my dog is on the ground, sort of pat the edge of the table until she puts her front paws up on it and then immediately treat her. Um, this is helpful for her because she is a bigger dog. She weighs about 56 pounds. Um, and so what that allows me to do is have her put her paws on the table and me lift her back end up onto the table. So it makes it easier for me to get my dog on the table. Once she's actually on the table, what I want to do is continue to give her treats, um, help her build her confidence with being up on the table so that she associates getting on the grooming table with getting lots of yummy treats. So to kind of talk about my equipment, um, this is a master equipment table. It's the one that has adjustable height um, just because I wasn't exactly sure which height I would want for her. I like for her to be positioned where I'm not having to like lean over and crane my back. Um, but also not too high so that when I'm trimming up her paws, it's easy for me. Um, and I also bought the arm through pet edge and it came with this little grooming loop, the black one. I bought this one separately. I think it actually goes with a different grooming arm, um, but I clipped it up here just to try to play with it earlier. I'm not currently using it, but it's really easy to set up and you can find all this stuff on Amazon as well. I found it on pet edge. So as you can see, Roxanne's pretty comfortable with being on the grooming table. Um, she sees the treats in my hand. Good girl, that's good. Um, another thing I wanna talk about is that this is an absolute must if you have a golden retriever, at least in my book, or any kind of double coated or super hairy dog. Um, this, as you can see, this is a Sherm Bow. I think that's how it's pronounced dryer um, i got it on amazon you can buy it in a few different places and they have their own website too um, it's the kind that has either with heat or without heat and you can adjust how hard the air blows out of it so i started out drying both of my golden retrievers with a human hair dryer but the difference between a human hair dryer and a dog dryer is that so with dog hair dryers it uses high velocity forced air to actually blow the water out of the dog's coat. But with the human hair dryer, it uses heat combined with air to more evaporate the water out of the hair. And so it's easier on the dog's skin for you to not use high heat on their hair to dry them completely. So I really like this and this drastically decreases my drying time for my dogs um, since they do have very thick coats, or at least Roxanne does. Gemma's coat is not quite as thick, but yeah. It would take me like an hour to get her damp dry with a human hair dryer. But with this one, it probably takes about 25 minutes depending on whether it's really hot outside. Today I have her partially in the sun, so that's kind of helping to dry her hair out. So there's my dryer and there's my slicker brush. It has wires that can reach into the dog's coat and you really need that with a golden retriever because they have double coats and you need to be able to reach into their undercoat and pull out some of those dead hairs that are kind of like down underneath, down deep in her fur, not just on the surface. So what I like to do is take my dryer, and I recently learned this trick to help get, um, if your golden retriever has some wave to their hair, kind of um, along close to their tail, like Roxanne does. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, stand up. Good girl. You can't see it a whole lot because I mostly dried it out with her blow dryer, but if you start right here, right above their tail, see you can see she has a little bit of wave. If you wanna try to get rid of that, you can start drying your dog right here um, with the grain of the hair. So you can go like, like this, kind of from side to side from directly above. Don't blow it this way. Don't blow toward her head because it's gonna encourage that wave to happen. If you don't care about the wave, that's fine. It's just a trick that I found. 
So starting at the tail um, or right above her tail, that's where I start. And then I work down to her feet. Um, the thing about this grooming loop that she's attached to is it helps her to stay facing more forward so I can get to her tail because Roxanne will tolerate her tail being touched. She accepts it, but it's not her favorite thing. So a lot of the time she tries to turn around when I start messing with her tail or her feathers back here at her pants. All right, so I'm going to get to drying her a little bit more and then I'll talk kind of about how I brush her. Um, a grooming rake that I use that helps pull out some of her loose hair in her undercoat even more than just the slicker brush. And I'll talk about how I kind of trim her nails and her feet. Okay, so now Roxanne is pretty much dry. As you can see, I've done her on this side and the other side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and brush her with the slicker brush and I'm also going to go through with a coat rake that I will show you in just a second. Um, what I like to do, there may be a better way of doing this, but what I know is a technique called line brushing and it's where you start in, at the top and you go down in a vertical line. So it helps to make sure that you get every inch of your dog's hair. So really I would start up here at her head and then go down and it makes sure that you get all over your dog. So just to kind of show what I'm doing, so I'm brushing all the way down. And I will also be trimming her feet and I'll kind of describe what I do to trim her nails too. And I'm making sure to get all through her feathers. They're a little wavy because I didn't dry her feathers straight away, um, but that's okay. So I go through and brush her tail very gently. Um, usually I will use both hands, one hand to brush and the other hand to kind of hold the hair so I'm not ripping any kind of tangles out. And another thing is that I use conditioner on her fur when I bathe her. Um, the main reason is to help her smell better because I think it makes her smell really good. But also it kind of helps in these areas where her hair is a little bit longer um, to keep it from getting matted and tangled up. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about trimming your dog's hair. Um, this mostly revolves around the feet. See, her feet are just a little scruffy. I'm going to clean those up. You can also trim behind your dog's ears if they have some wild hair right there. Hers really isn't bad because I just um, trimmed her hair not too long ago. And then also you can do their tail, which how you get this nice taper, sharp looking tail on the golden. Um, my breeder taught me how to do it. So what you do is you find the end of the bones in your dog's tail, like the end of their tail nub. And then you gather all of the hair together right past that, making sure not to cut that bone, obviously. And then you literally take your scissors and cut straight across. She's got a few straggly hairs because it's been a couple weeks since I did it. But that helps you get the nice looking tail. And it naturally tapers itself. So you just cut it straight across and it starts to look like this. So talking about the grooming rake I like to use, this is a Furminator, but it is not a traditional Furminator. When I think of a Furminator, I think of the grooming blade that's popular, but a Furminator can actually cut the guard hairs, which are like the top hairs you see on the surface here on your dog, and it can damage their coat over time. So I really wanted to take care of her coat well, and this is just Furminator brand, but it has, um, basically like rolling little pins that rotate here and you see how long they are so what this does is it reaches all the way into her undercoat and pulls out any of that extra dead hair that's ready to come out and it helps her to not shed quite as much see how much I've got just with a few passes over her coat and that's after already using the high velocity hair dryer on her using a de-shedding shampoo and using her slicker brush. Okay, so now moving on to the feet, which is one of my favorite parts because you can make them look really good, but it can also be kind of frustrating sometimes. Um, here, hold still. So what I wanna do first is brush this hair up, which I also dried her hair on her feet against the grain of the hair to kind of pull up those little crazy hairs that come out between the toes. What I'm gonna do is take a pair of shears and cut straight across with, with the curve of her paw to get rid of those hairs. 
This will help your golden if they have Grinch feet, or sometimes they're called slipper feet, where the hair on their toes comes out beyond the end of their paw. Okay, so I just took this comb. Um, this comb, I got it off Amazon. It has a fine and a coarse end. It's really um, like a Greyhound style comb is what this is called. It's a really cheap one off of Amazon. You can get really expensive ones or you can get cheap ones. But for my purposes, I just got one. I think it was like $12 on Amazon. So I have these shears that I also got off of Amazon. Watch out, baby. I'm not going to film too much of this because I really need to use both hands to hold her still. Um, just so that I don't cut her. Which she usually stands pretty still, but I want to be careful. And what I'm going to do is I will cut right across those hairs, just like that. And I will repeat it for every space in between her toes. Just like that. And then you can brush it up again and do the same thing again. See, this is still a little bit crazy. So I'm going to comb it comb it up to pull those hairs out or you can put your fingers if you don't have a comb you can put your fingers in between the toes and pull the hair up and this will help you see what needs to be cut all right so now I've got the crazy hairs in between the toes gone but now I want to get the edge of her foot looking nice and round some people say round and cat like um, so what I want to do is go around the outside of her foot and you can use the straight shears like what I was using earlier or I have a pair of curved shears it kind of just depends on how I'm feeling which ones I use you can get all of this on Amazon okay so as you can see I've kind of gone around the outline of her paw here it isn't perfect and just a tip it's easier to do if your dog's nails are shorter the shorter they are the easier it is to get like a nice clean line around the side of their paw also kind of did right back here a little bit to sort of blend that hair and make her paw look a little bit cleaner so the next thing you're going to want to do is clean up the paw pads of your dog. I've already done about half of hers, but you can see she's got some crazy hair right there. So you just want to go straight across with your scissors and cut that off, being careful not to nick the paw pads. So as you can see, this looks a lot cleaner than what we had started with. She's got a few little places that are still a touch crazy, but overall it looks better than it did before. Something you can do for the hawks is just brush that hair straight out right here in the back and cut straight down with your pair of scissors if your dog has kind of an overgrowth of hair going on back there. Just a note, if you do want to trim your dog's ears, what you want to do is comb them out or brush them out really well. I probably won't do hers because hers just got done. But you can use thinning shears right behind the ears, going straight up and down, like cut with your scissors going at this angle right here and do like three snips and then comb it and look at it. You don't want to take too much hair away from your golden's face because the way their hair lays on their ears helps give them their sweet expression. So if you take too much of that hair away, it can make your golden's face look really harsh and not reflect their personality very well. So talking about nails, um, I have a Dremel. It plugs in and I like it a lot better than one. I had a cheap one that I had from Walmart but it broke after I used it maybe like seven times. So I have a Dremel now that plugs in and it's Dremel brand. It's worked pretty well so far. And um, what I do is I just use the Dremel with a 120 bit um, end on it and just gently sand down her nails a little bit at a time. You wanna make sure not to quick your dog when you're cutting their nails. Um, so just take off a little bit at a time and if you're trying to get your dog's nails a lot shorter than they currently are then what you really should do is just do their nails a little bit every three or four days or even once a week and as you get the nail shorter and shorter the quick inside their nail will recede and, and move back closer to their paw and then you'll be able to keep their nails shorter all right so she's officially over me messing with her at this point but just to kind of show you what it looks like now that she's completely done being groomed, I did cut her toenails and I did them with the Dremel. And that's her foot, little baby feet. And now she's ready to get a treat.
Good girl, Roxanne.